Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journal. Today we're going to be looking at some new releases from the Dina Waitley September release and playing with some mic making. So this is the first page in my brand new journal. Um, this is a craft journal from Dina Wakeley and I have been in a little bit of a rut lately with what I've been creating. So I've gone back to the old standards of doing lots of mic making. And mic making is something I find really relaxing um, because I don't think about it. And I know um, I put sort of a picture of some of my mic making up recently on my Instagram and people are going, oh, you know, I was saying I have, no, have trouble knowing when to stop and people are going, oh, I actually have trouble knowing when to start. So this is how I start. I don't actually think about it much as you know if you've um, followed my channel for a while I do love rainbow colors so all I do is put out dots of colors I tend to work in threes um, again I don't really need to think about it and it starts to give you some of those visual triangles you see I don't necessarily follow my instructions because I've got four bits of the the orange there but basically I just fill in the gaps I try not to put them next to each other I try to spread them out around the page um, if I overlap the colours a little bit, that's fine. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Now, obviously, I'm doing this in my craft journal, um, which is a bit odd, you know, because I'm covering up the entire page, but I knew I wanted to have a little bit of colour and brightness on the first page of my journal. Just to balance up some of the brighter colours on here, I decided to go in with some mineral, which is sort of a bluish-white colour. Um, to give me a little bit of balance on the page and then I've just gone in with my heat gun just to make sure it's dry now because I've put out such a tiny amount of paint by the time I've sort of brushed it all out it's mostly dry anyway so it really doesn't take all that long to dry so this is a really quick process to do next thing I'm doing is just going in with some extra colors and playing around with some different paint brushes and I've found the best paint brushes for doing mic making are some really cheap ones that you don't mind smooshing into the page and getting all sorts of weird and random shapes from um, so these are really awful kids brushes that I get really cheap from the dollar shop um, and I see I've got a flat brush there I've got a, a thinner brush and I'm just using the brush strokes to help make the marks so again I'm not thinking about this very much I'm overlapping my marks I'm still kind of sticking to that rule of three I'm kind of putting the, the spots in three places in this case I have sort of connected them up to give a line of um, flow across the page but sometimes I don't do that um, I'm just going with the flow really so I am using similar colours I've used in the background but just a different shade off. So I've got that brighter blue, I've got the darker green, just so it sort of stays up a little bit. Next I'm going in with the stamp. Um, this is a text stamp from the new Dean Wakeley set called Perfect to Me. Um, you see it's got cool images on it. Um, I'm a sucker for text so that's why I um, grabbed that one out. I'm just adding a little bit of black to the page. So I find when I'm adding black to a page I like to do it in stamping form because it um, gives me a bit of control um, over the page. Next I'm going in with my stencil and this is a new gloss spray which is Peacock and just spraying through onto my page using both sides of the stencil so spraying it through and then I've obviously got some excess on there and I'm just pressing that on so I'm getting the reverse of the stencil as well. Um, the reason the colour from this gloss spray is sticking on this page so well or standing out in this page so well is because I've obviously sealed the craft paper from the um, seeping into the page from the original layers of acrylic paint. You can see on the left hand side when it's gone onto the front page how the colour is actually sort of almost a greenish colour and quite translucent whereas on the page I'm actually working on it actually sits on top. So. Um, there is a bit of a difference when you're using gloss sprays direct on a page so if you want to have a really true colour you need to seal the page in some way um, particularly if you're using um, these, the craft because it's quite a um, absorbent paper. Now I'm going in and just drawing on the page with the stem of the um, spray bottle so this is a new black 
uh, gloss spray. So again, I'm really excited. We've got some black to put on the page. It's really, f it's funny actually when I put it on because I think, oh, this almost looks like night. It's got a, a blue shade to it. But when you dry it or when it dries, it as is actually a really inky black color. So um, don't be fooled when you first put it on. You might think, oh, it's a bit blue. It's got blue tinges to it, but it is actually a really true black. So once I've done that, I was really liking where it was. Um, it's very busy, but that's me. I like it when it's busy. And um, what I was tossing up was actually putting some more stamping on the page. So um, I really like the stamping of the text, but I just wanted to put a little bit more on. I'm also looking at it going, when do I stop? So as I alluded to at the beginning, I really struggle with knowing when's enough on my page. Um, and as you can see, I tend to go for the more is more um, school of thought. <laughs> so there's, there's lots on this page. This is a stamp from the Half Faces set. Um, and again, you can see this is a Half Face. It's got some text on it. And I'm just stamping it in random places. This is just for texture in the background. While you can kind of see the face, particularly in the close-ups, it's more there for line work and a little bit of interest as you look closely at the page. It's not necessarily um, that I want it to be a focal image. So if you did want that to be a focal image on a page like this, I'd suggest maybe stamping on some cardboard and sticking it on the front or doing a bit of a collage to it um, or putting it onto some tissue paper and so on so you get a really... Um, bold image but I want it to sort of blend into the background. Once I've finished I'm just going in and drying everything again. Again it's mostly dry but I just want to make 100% sure. And I had this piece of magazine text which has been sitting staring at me in my magazine um, collection for quite a while. It did say Joyride on it, but I just wanted to use the joy in this page because I wanted it to be a bit of an introduction to my journal. So I don't often do, in fact, usually I do my the first page of my journal. It's one of the last pages I do. Um, so it's quite funny, I've actually done the very first page. Um, but I wanted this to be a bit of an inspiration to open up my journal. So I've got this beautiful, you know, bright mic making page um, that I really enjoy doing. So I've got the joy of um, Mike, uh, the joy of making art. It's the title of my journal. Um, and I've just gone in with my handwriting, as messy as it is, to, to do that. So as I usually do with a lot of my handwriting, I'm going in with a fine black pen and doing a bit of a drop shadow on my letters, which in this sort of looks like it's completely lost but actually in close-up um, which you'll see at the end it does actually help pop it out from the background so I did want you know joy to be the most visible on the page I wanted everything else to kind of blend into the background but not so much that I was going to completely lose having that writing on the page and we also decided just to balance it up a little bit that I would go in with the printed letters and again going with the white pen so I've got that um, white and black on both the letters and just draw around the letter so it stands out a little bit as well and puts a little bit of that white on. So here's a bit of close-up you can see the gloss sprays and the splats and a bit of the stamping in the background that's close up to the new face. Um, how you can draw with the pens you can see here the writing by just putting that little black shadow on it how it helps to sort of push it out from the background. So while you think in the distance it doesn't make a difference, it really, really does. And here's a um, the full picture of the whole page. So it's a bit eclectic, it's a bit all over the place, but for me this is a really great way of just getting my hands working, um, getting some colour on the page and having fun, which is what art journaling is all about. So I'm really glad I've got this my first page of my journal. To find out any links to what you've seen in the video, check out my description box below. And until next time, bye for now.